We never think it would happen to us. And remember, disaster strikes and time to prepare has already passed. My name is Aftab Khawaja, council member for the Central US VRM disaster management lead. Are you able to answer following questions? How will I receive emergency alert warning? What is my shelter plan? What is my evacuation plan? What is my family household communication plan? Do I need to update my emergency preparedness kit? Do I have proper insurance for my home and family? Many of us presume a natural disaster would not impact me or to my family. During today's presentation, we will share some real life experiences how disaster have impacted our community, families, and businesses. Please take notes on important takeaways during the presentation so you can sit with your family to prepare the emergency plan. Next slide, please. Sophia. Now I would like to introduce team and our partners on this call today. We have from Focus USA, Chairman Shanila Momin, Vice Chairman Minaz Lakhani, Altaz Bhanji is the member for emergency preparedness management, Sophia Asani, senior program manager, and we have national disaster management team, Noreen Qasim. She's also a member for safety and security disaster management. We also have Suleiman Gilani, national DMT lead, Aziz Kherani, national DMT monitoring member. Our central disaster management team is myself, Aftab Khawaja, I'm the council member for VRM. Uh, Rahim Ali, he's our disaster management team lead. Kiran Sadruddin, deputy team lead. Now I would like to pass it to Focus USA Chairman, Shanila Momin, to share insight. Chairman. Thank you. Yalimut, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for allowing us this time with you and your families. As many of you know, Focus Humanitarian Assistance USA is a 501c3 nonprofit charity organization that has been serving the Jamaat and the communities we live in throughout Central and South Asia for the past 25 years. We are an international crisis response and disaster risk management agency. We provide support for emergency relief to communities suffering from natural disasters and man-made crisis. Our mission is to save lives, reduce suffering, and create resilience in communities prone to man-made or natural disasters. As you can see uh, from this slide, there are three layers of support, national, regional, and local. In the US, FOCUS closely collaborates with the National Council through our ongoing partnership with NDMT, which is the National Disaster Management Team, and with the regional councils through their volunteers to ensure that our Jamaat is prepared and ready to face any disaster with resilience. We know that we cannot control the natural disasters that we may face, but we certainly can control our responses and our ability to overcome the challenges faced during times of disasters. Our, our top priority is the safety and security of our Jamaat. We want to ensure that our Jamaati members' lives as well as their property are well protected. We will work together to provide uh, Jamaat tools and skills that are needed to ensure that Jamaat is protected. Some of our initiatives for the Jamaat include uh, creating specific videos on what to do during a disaster for Jamaat awareness, uh, providing text messaging services that inform local Jamaati members of impending disasters in their area, uh, conducting shakeout drills in Jamaat Khanas and through social media, uh, providing CPR first aid trainings to the local volunteers and disaster management teams, uh, providing the regional council with support during times of disaster, setting up webinars like this one to enhance the Jamaat's knowledge of hazards, risks in their areas and management of these risks and many more. Um, our message uh, to the Jamaat for Jamaat preparedness, disaster preparedness is simply threefold. One, have a family emergency plan. 
two, build or buy an emergency kit, and three, stay informed about natural disasters through local apps. We have also negotiated discounted pricing from vendors for the purchase of emergency kits that can be found on our website. Uh, the central region, as you know, faces many natural disasters in any given year. This presentation is provided to ensure that our Jamaat in the central region is aware of the different types of disasters in their area, what steps to take before and during a disaster. If we can ensure that this group today is well prepared, then this time is well spent. We challenge each of you to be prepared and become our ambassadors to ensure that our Jamaati members, especially the vulnerable in our Jamaat, also be become prepared so that our community is strong and we're able to overcome any adversity quickly during a disaster. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Noreen, who's the natural, National Disaster Management uh, team member. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman Chanula and, and Yali Malut, everyone. It, it's a pleasure to see all the, the lovely faces on the call here today. So thanks for spending some of your Sunday with us. Um, and Chairman Chanula, thank you for, for the introduction uh, and your insightful comments. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Noreen Kasim. I serve as the National Council member for safety, security, and disaster management. Um, just for a general data point, this is the first time the National Council has had a member on the National Council with the seat specifically dedicated to disaster management and safety and security. And I say that because I'd like to highlight the fact that the institutions are prioritizing explicitly the need for disaster management and safety and security within the Jamaat. It is a priority of the institution, and you will continue to see this as a priority of the institution in, in the, the months and years ahead uh, as, as we work together to, to raise the consciousness of the Jamaat as it relates to disaster preparedness and safety and security. Before I continue and, 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 and we, we move further in the presentation, I just want to highlight the institutional partnership uh, between the National Council and, and Focus USA. Uh, we, we work hand in hand, we are truly one team, uh, and we're immensely grateful for the coordination and, and the expertise that Focus USA brings to the table that allows us to have programs like this and, and what Chairman Shanila described. Um, as we all work together, all including all of you and your families and the Jamaat and the volunteers to build the Jamaat into a resilient community, and I'll speak about that in just a moment. Uh, there are a number of support mechanisms to the Jamaat, and, and that slide was up a, a few minutes ago, um, that are all working together, from Kamar Saib Aftab's team, to Rahim's team, to Focus USA, to the National Disaster Management team, to all the volunteers that are out there. There are a number of support mechanisms at the Jamaat Kana level, at the regional level, and at the national level, all towards uh, helping the Jamaat uh, when it comes to natural disasters. Uh, it's a full team coordinated effort. Uh, when it comes to, to supporting this initiative. So before we go any further, I want to set the scene with a short video. Uh, so we'll start with the video and then we'll come back, we'll talk about it, and we'll get into some more of the, 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 the topics of the day as we make our way through the presentation. So with that, Sophia, over to you. We never thought this would happen to us, but it did. When we came home, there was water in our basement, but some parts of Alcott City were completely flooded. किस्मत वाले समझे कि ये कभी होगा नहीं लेकिन ऐसा नहीं है ये हमारे साथ हुआ When we heard the news report of how Hurricane Harvey making landfall in our area, we were told that we might need to evacuate.
Yes, local authority did tell us to evacuate. National Guard assisted us in evacuation and we were evacuated by boat. Our house was flooded after Hurricane Harvey, about a foot of water, 12 inches of water, just below the power outlet um, came in our house. Uh, we had sheetrock damage, uh, kitchen appliances were damaged, kitchen cabinet were damaged. Uh, it took us approximately six months to fix our house and come back to our, our regular routine. We never thought this would happen to us, but it did. Thanks, thanks, Sophia. And, and the reason we, we show this video uh, at the top of the presentation is really th these powerful images of how areas that we all know, members of our Jamaat that many of us know, have been affected by natural disasters. Uh, these are sobering images and they're sad images. Uh, and they, they demonstrate the power of severe weather and natural disasters. Uh, and, and we only have to look at the year 2020 uh, and even the recent months uh, to really understand uh, the, the impact of natural disasters uh, around us. Uh, the, the, just to name a few, uh, what we'll speak about in, in a few minutes, with Kamar Saib uh, but from the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic to just overall the increase of, of the impact and the frequency of natural disasters around us, including in the central region, which I know spans a number of states uh, across the central part of the United States. Just to share some context uh, as, as to why we're having this conversation and why these images are important for all of us to understand and internalize, um, the mandate of this team, and, and I say this team to include everyone who's presenting here today, from, from the regional council leadership to the national council leadership to focus, our mandate is to build the Jamaat into a resilient community. And when we say resilient community, what does that mean? It's ensuring that we as a community possess the capacity to withstand and quickly adapt and successfully recover from a natural disaster. Uh, whatever kind of natural disaster that may be, whether it's small in nature, localized to our area, or one like Harvey, which impacted a large swath of, of your neighboring region in, in the Southwest. Um, and we're here to help the Jamaat do that, to build that, uh, that resilience amongst yourselves and your families and within the Jamaats. Um, and, and so we do that together uh, as, one, as one team, holistically, we invest in and we prioritize building preparedness strategies, improving the overall readiness of the Jamaat um, and sharing with the Jamaat information and tools and resources to help you stay safe and, and recover in the, in the unfortunate uh, event that, that a natural disaster does strike your region. Um, it, it's not always seen, but I do want to demonstrate uh, this point that uh, the institutional leadership at all levels closely follows the impact of, of, of natural disasters and severe weather incidents in your local area. Uh, and I know some of the members of the local DMT team are on the call here today, as well as the regional leadership. Um, the DMT team mobilizes, they, they have a proactive function to monitor what's going on in the area, but also mobilizes to check in on the Jamaat uh, and provide assistance where assistance is needed in the event of a severe weather incident in your area. And those impacts and that assistance is quarterbacked locally through your regional council leadership. Um, and you have likely seen this uh, throughout the COVID pandemic. We have seen the DMT team mobilize across the country to make calls to check in, the wellness calls to check in on the health, safety, and well being of the Jamaat. We have had more localized calls made when a, when a tornado or other such incidents hits a very specific area of a very specific town or, or, or city. And so it, it doesn't stop here. This is a collective team effort, um, and, and we will continue to see severe weather impact our regions, uh, particularly in Central, whether it's freezing temperatures or flooding or tornadoes. Um, we've seen it in all corners, uh, and we as a Jamaat have not been spared. And I think, as Kamar Saib mentioned at the beginning, we never think it'll happen to us. It has happened to us. And it's important that we prepare now so that we can ensure that we do everything we can to, to be prepared in the event it does. Um, so the question is, what are we as individuals gonna do about it? Sophia, do you mind throwing the slides back up? 
So the goal of this webinar, and, and I'm going to go over the agenda to really set the scene of what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes we have together. It, the goal of this webinar is to answer this question. What are we going to do about it for ourselves, for our families, for our Jamaat, and for the communities in which we live? So we're going to talk about the three big steps to preparedness. And then we're going to go deep dive into some of the more specific central region uh, natural disasters and weather related uh, incidents that you will likely see and have seen and talk about what are the proactive things we can do in the event those things start to happen. And so that we start that thinking process proactively now. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to, to Kamar Saib uh, to, to go over the, the more detailed structure of how the DMT team works in the central region as well as take us through some of the more recent impacts uh, and weather related, severe weather related incidents that you all have seen. Uh, that'll be a nice transition into some of the more core content we'll talk about in a few minutes. Kamar Saib, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Noreen. I would like to share with you the regional team and I, I'm proud of this regional team. They are tenacious when it comes to natural disasters. Uh, we have Rahim Huzur Muki, Rahim Ali. He's our central DMT lead. Kiran Sadruddin, uh, deputy lead. Then we have monitoring lead, Akbar Merchant. Uh, Amina Ismail, she's our project manager. Sharj Shazad Merali. Then we have 10 JCs, what we call Jamaat Khana coordinators. Sadruddin Naga from Oklahoma, Denver, we have Nizar Himani, Little Rock Asif Hirani, Albuquerque, we have Jamil Ramtullah, Waco, we have Sima Dilawar, Tyler, we have Rosmin Kurji. Dallas headquarter, Ashraf Farishta, Plano, Shazin, uh, Suhail, and then also Tri-City, Shamsa, Shamsh Koja, Mid-Cities, Rizwan Sadruddin. When, when any natural disaster happened, this is a coordinated effort. They monitor, then they report, and then they provide support. Next slide, please. Let's look at the natural disaster that impacted our region. These are the real natural disasters. Impacted our communities in the past two years. Some of our members impacted our mem Jamaati members, their homes, their businesses, and a tornado hit the Jonesboro, Arkansas in March, 2020. A major tornado hit in Dallas, Texas in October, 2019, impacting many smiley businesses. Severe winter storms, as well as thunderstorms impacted Denver, Colorado. These are the impacts that we are seeing for the last 18 months alone. And Arlington, tornado hit Arlington, Texas in November, 2020. And that's, that's direct impact to our region, to our Jamaat, to our communities where we live. Next slide. Okay, so time for some trivia. So what are the top three disasters in the central region? Go ahead and type it in the chat box. We'll give you a little bit for you guys to answer. What are the top three disasters in the central region? A, thunderstorms, B, flooding, C, Earthquakes, D, tornadoes, the top three disasters. Lots of good answers coming in. So our top three disasters in the central region are A, thunderstorms, B, flooding, and D, tornadoes. Good job to everyone who answered. Back to you, Kamiya Saib. Thank you, Jim. Let's look at the common hazards that our central region uh, come across. Northern Texas, we look into severe storm, flood, tornadoes, extreme heat, extreme cold. Temperature reaches you know, above 100 degrees during summer times. Oklahoma, look into very similar situation, earthquake, extreme cold. Uh, Arkansas, uh, thunderstorm, drought situation. New Mexico, uh, flooding, fire, wildfire, drought. Colorado, we look into wildfires. Uh, it's not pretty common, but it comes to the mountainous areas. 
flood, winter storms. That's, that's the major impact in D Denver, Colorado. Next trivia question. What are the three steps for basic preparedness? A, make a plan. B, build, a, build or buy a kit. C, stay informed. Or D, all of the above. Let us know in the chat box. That is correct. Most of you did get this answer correct. The answer is C, all of the above. You need to make a plan, build or buy a kit for yourself and your families, and make sure to stay informed. All right, we're gonna go on to talk about uh, basic family preparedness. Uh, my name is Altas Banji. I'm the uh, member for disaster management on uh, the Focus USA board. Um, and before I get into some of the nitty gritty, uh, you can stay on that slide, Sophia. Before I get into some of the nitty gritty, just a little uh, anecdote slash joke um, to get us started. And you know, there was a there was a man in a town where a flood was about to hit, and the rest of the town was evacuating, and a bus came by to to pick up all the, the townspeople and get them out of town. And the bus came by and he said, oh, no, no, don't worry about me. I'm waiting for God to save me. And so the bus said, uh, okay, and uh, off they went and, and um, he didn't get on the bus. And so the, the flood hit, the flood started to, the water started to rise and uh, a rowboat came, uh, came by with some of the rescuers and uh, they asked the man to leave. And he said, oh, no, 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 don't worry about me. I'm waiting for God to save me. And he said, the, boat, the man on the boat said, okay, fine. The rescuer said, fine. And off they went. The man stayed in his house and the water got higher and he climbed onto his roof. And a helicopter came by and um, to, to rescue him. And he says, oh, no, 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 no. Don't worry about me. God's going to save me. You go on uh, and save others. So the helicopter went off and, you know, eventually he got um, sucked in by the floodwaters, died. He goes to heaven and God says, um, uh, he says to God, you know, I'm so upset. I had all this faith and you were going to save me. And God said to him, I sent you a bus, a boat and a helicopter. What more did you want me to do? And this is really, um, you know, very much in line with that kind of uh, approach where we're giving you the foundation, the, 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 the information you're going to need to be prepared and get ready for any disaster. There are not going to be any miracles without you preparing yourself and doing everything you need to do uh, to prepare. So we can talk about the, the main steps on the next slide. So step one is to make a plan. Um, it's often difficult to think about what to do when you're in the middle of a crisis situation. Many times you might not be able to recall information that otherwise would be at the tip of your tongue. You might not know your own children, children's or your parents' phone numbers because it's um, in your phone. And so having a plan with that information is important. Um, and, and as such, making a plan will force you to, to document all the important information that you and your family will need during a disaster. Part of this process also includes planning for recovery. This means ensuring you have the right insurance coverage based on the type of risks that are relevant to your region. It means reviewing your insurance policy to make sure that there are no insurance gaps. Step two is to build a kit or buy a kit for that matter. During a disaster, you may be required to shelter in place or evacuate very quickly. Having a family emergency kit that contains the necessary supplies and documents may play an important part in surviving in a disaster. Finally, step three is to stay informed. In the case of predictable disasters, staying informed means knowing, for example, how weather patterns are progressing towards you. Staying informed also means knowing if and when you are required to evacuate. During a disaster, staying informed means staying on top of how patterns are changing, how weather patterns are changing, and when you are uh, cleared to begin any recovery efforts. 
We have some data on the next slide showing how prepared individuals in the central region are. What you are seeing is data from the most recent Jamati survey, which was conducted in 2020. The data shows preparedness metrics for families in the central US region. So just under 10% of you have an emergency plan. About 23% of you have an emergency kit ready. Over 45% of you receive emergency alerts through apps or text messages. More than 60% of you have some have either home or renter's insurance for natural disasters. The number that is most worrisome is that more than 20% of families in the central US region are not at all prepared for a natural disaster. Based on these numbers, we would like to see more families develop an emergency plan. Our goal is to have that number reach at least 25%. In addition, if you're part of the 21.6% 20 of families that have not prepared for a natural disaster, we ask that you take the time to work on a plan, get an emergency kit, sign up for alerts, and evaluate your insurance needs. Let's take a look, a closer look at the family emergency plan now. <clears throat> your family may not be together if and when a disaster strikes. So you should know how you'll contact one another and reconnect if you're not together. One thing a plan does is allow you to establish a family meeting place in advance. Some other items on the plan include your evacuation route and your shelter plan. Your plan will also help you think about what you might need based on specific requirements of your family, including dietary needs, medical needs, languages spoken, and in some case, your pets. You can download a plan template at the Focus USA website, focus-usa.org forward slash plan. You can fill in this template with specific information relevant to your family and store it in a safe place until such time as you need it. Let's move on to look at planning as it applies to insurance. Common sense tells us that homeowners insurance should cover our homes, but does it cover everything that could affect our homes, including natural disasters that could impact us? It's crucial to understand what exactly your home ins homeowner's insurance covers before a disaster hits. The last thing you want is to find out after an event that you don't have the coverage that you need. Policies will vary based on location and disaster type. You should check with your insurance agent whether you're covered for the disasters that are likely to impact your region. For example, for the central region, for full protection after a tornado, you will require extended coverage. Earthquake protection also requires a separate policy or endorsement. Those who require coverage for floods will need to carry separate flood insurance. These are only guidelines. Please make sure to check your policy for the coverage that you have and any gaps that exist. What is important is that you understand the types of disasters that may affect your area and speak to your insurance agent about coverage for those specific types of incidents. You can also reach out to the access hotline if you have any questions about insurance coverage. And the phone number for the access line is on the bottom of, that, uh, of the slide that you're looking at now. We'll now go into the details of step two, the emergency kit. Having an emergency kit is important during a disaster and in some cases can be the difference between life and death. One thing to know is that on average, first responders will start helping the general public three days after the disaster. This is because they need to tend to issues and emergencies related to public infrastructure before they serve the general public. So you must think about having three days worth of supplies in your emergency kit. You can think of your kit in two categories. First, are all the supplies that you and possibly your pets would need to survive for three days. Second is the so-called go bag that contains items that you would need if you had to quickly pick up and leave your home. Make sure everyone in your family knows exactly where the emergency kit is kept. Note that you can find a list of items for a kit as well as locations to purchase a kit at focus-usa.org 
forward slash kit. Let's briefly go over the type of items in an emergency kit. So what are the basic items in an emergency kit? Food and water, first of all. This includes non-perishable food items, as well as a gallon of water per person per day. It's also a good idea to have a battery powered radio to get alerts in the event that your cell phone loses power or the cellular networks are down. A few safety items, including a flashlight, whistle, and first aid kit should be included. Your kit should also contain supplies for basic personal hygiene, such as toothbrushes, toothpaste, soap, shampoo, and more. And don't forget blankets to stay warm in the event of cool temperatures. There should also be some ancillary supplies such as tools, plastic sheeting, duct tape, tissues, and garbage bags. Finally, there's the go bag, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And not to worry, if you couldn't write all of this down, just go to focus-usa.org slash kit and download a list of the supplies. Let's move on to look at the go bag. The purpose of the go bag is to have supplies that would be required if you needed to pick up and leave your home in a hurry. Make sure to use a waterproof fire resistant bag. The go bag should include copies of personal documentation such as passports, birth certificates, deeds to your home or business and insurance policies. The go bag will also have a travel size first aid kit. And don't forget to put a copy of all medications in your go bag. Also recommended are face masks and hand sanitizers based on our learnings with the COVID-19 pan COVID COVID pandemic. Other items include cash, extra clothing, a flashlight, extra chargers or battery packs for your phone. By the way, you should also cons consider storing digital copies of important documentation in addition to what is in the go bag. And again, this is a long list of items. If you'd like to download any of these lists, or find out where you can buy these kits, visit focus-usa.org slash kit and get that list. And so where can you get a kit? Let's move on and find out. In the past, we've held activities in Jamaat Khanna to build kits. However, given the current climate, this is not feasible right now. Instead, we've negotiated discounted rates with some organizations to sell you ready-made kits, which can be delivered straight to your door. You can find a link to all of these vendors on the Focus USA website. In particular, note that we have discounts available with Ready America and the American Red Cross. You can also buy the kits online at Amazon, Costco, Sam's Club, and Walmart. It does not matter to us where you get the kit. The important thing is to have a kit that meets your family's needs. Let's move on to talk about staying informed. Remember that preparedness includes planning, building a kit, and staying informed. We've hit the first two topics, so let's talk about staying informed. First of all, we'd recommend that you sign up for Disaster Management Team, or DMT Alerts. It's very easy to enroll. All you have to do is text your Jamaat Khanna code to 94502. The Jamaat Khanna codes are listed on this slide. For example, if you are from Dallas headquarters, you would text the co code Dallas HQ to 94502. It's that easy. When you're enrolled, you will receive weather notifications, emergency alerts, and Jamaat Khanna closure information. Second, there are two apps that we would recommend that you download. One is the FEMA app. With this app, you will receive emergency alerts and information to help you decide what to do before, during, and after a disaster. Second is the American Red Cross Emergency Alerts app. This app will be another option to receive alerts, monitor conditions in your area, and help decide what to do in an emergency situation. Finally, there are a couple of other focus and council resources that may be helpful. You can find additional information about preparedness and staying informed on the Focus USA website. During or after a disaster, if you are in need of assistance, please use the 24-hour access helpline at 1-844-552-2237 or 1-844-55-ACCESS. 
let's take a look at specific natural disasters for which, which the US central region is at high risk. So we're gonna look at tornadoes, flooding, earthquakes, winter storms, power outages um, as the five key risks for the central region. We hope that you will get a better understanding on how to prepare and stay safe during these types of emergencies. Let's start with tornadoes. In the movie, The Wizard of Oz, we were all left to think that tornadoes were a good thing, that tornadoes might somehow take us to a wonderful fantasy world. This, however, is not the case. Let's look at the realities of tornadoes. Most, if not all of you, have seen pictures of tornadoes or perhaps even seen one in person. They look like funnels extending from the clouds downwards. They can happen anywhere at any time. And they bring intense winds over 200 miles an hour sometimes. Tornadoes po pose a significant risk to destroy buildings, flip cars, and create deadly flying debris. You might ask, however, if you are vulnerable to tornadoes in the central region. The next slide gives us the answer. As you can see from this heat map, many counties in the central US region are particularly vulnerable to tornadoes. Based on the categorization, a number of counties in the central regions are either extremely vulnerable or highly vulnerable to being impacted by a tornado. As such, it is vital that everyone here understand how best to prepare for and stay safe during a tornado. So let's talk about preparing for a tornado. First off, you should know the signs of a tornado. This includes a rotating funnel-shaped cloud, or it could be an approaching cloud of debris, or you could hear a very loud roar, similar to a freight train. If your community uses sirens, be sure that you're familiar with the warning tone. You should sign up for weather alerts using the DMT text messages or other similar warning systems. In advance of a tornado, think of all the places you frequent, such as school, work, a community center, and even Jamaat Khanna. You should identify an area in each of these places which is safe for you to be during a tornado. Finally, take a moment to review your insurance coverage and ensure that you have su sufficient coverage. What should you do during a tornado? The ideal place to be is a basement or designated storm cellar. If neither is available, find a small interior room on the lowest level of the building you are in. This means if you're outside, look for a sturdy building to get into. As much as possible, stay away from windows, doors, and outside walls. These can, be, these can cause severe harm to you when impacted by tornado winds. Since tornadoes can, be, can cause flying, uh, sorry, since tornadoes can ca ca cause flying debris, Use your arms to protect your head and neck. You can also put furniture and blankets around you. Now, if you're driving, do not wait under an overpass or bridge. Your best bet is to find a low flat location. If you cannot get indoors, cover your head and neck with your arms and cover your body with a coat or blanket if possible. How about afterwards? What should you do? You should definitely continue to monitor weather alerts to know when it is safe to leave your shelter. If you're trapped, cover your mouth with a cloth or mask and avoid breathing in dust. To alert others, try to send a text, a text message, bang on a pipe or wall, or use a whistle instead of shouting. Shouting uses a lot of energy compared to banging or whistling. When outside, stay clear of, fa of fallen power lines or broken utility lines. Do not enter damaged buildings until you are told that they are safe. Since phone systems are often down or busy after a disaster, use text messaging or social media to communicate with family and friends. Let's move on to a related type of weather event, thunderstorms. We wanted to briefly cover thunderstorms and lightning because these often precede or accompany tornadoes. Lightning can cause severe injury or death. So it's important to consider a few tips to help you stay safe. Thunder and lightning go together. So when you hear thunder, move indoors. This can be into a building or a car if it is closer. To the extent that it is possible, unplug your appliances. If you still use a landline phone, avoid using it during a thunderstorm or lightning storm. 
Let me hand it over to Kieran to talk about some specific incidents in the central region. So some of the Jamaati impact locally in the central region. Um, local DMT team had actually reached out to the business owners and families that were affected during any of these tornadoes. We provided information to the institutions in order to provide help to these businesses slash family members. Some major tornadoes that have happened within the past few years. March 29, the tornado that hit in Jonesboro, Arkansas. April 23rd, tornado hit North Texas and Oklahoma. November 25th, the tornado that hit in Arlington, Texas. As you can see, these pictures here, these are actual pictures of family members and local businesses that have been affected. So, next trivia. What is the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning? A, watch is to look out your window and find the tornado. B, Warning is to seek shelter immediately as a tornado has been spotted. C, watch is to be prepared to seek shelter. D, both B and C. Let us know your answers in the chat box. So most of you have answered correctly. The correct answer is C, both B and C. A warning is to seek shelter immediately as a tornado has been spotted. And a watch is to be prepared to seek shelter. Back to you, Okaz. Great, thank you. So let's talk about flooding, which can be caused by a number of weather events that we've talked about, including heavy thunderstorms. Uh, to start with, a family emergency plan is critical to have as preparation for flooding. A family emergency plan will include your shelter plan. It will also include your evacuation route. Both of these things are important to know as part of staying safe during floods. During a flood, you may need to evacuate quickly. Knowing your evacuation routes in advance would be helpful. Practice the evacuation periodically, including with your pets. You should identify any potential shelters as well. Make sure you are receiving alerts and staying on top of the changing weather patterns. You can do this with the NDMT text messages as well as the FEMA app, for example. In some cases, flooding might be predicted in advance. If this is the case, make sure you have access to your personal documents either in paper or digital form. This includes identification documents as well as insurance policies. In advance of a flood, you can also help mitigate risks in your home. You can clean out your drains and gutters to limit any water buildup. And you can also bring outside furniture into the home. Move your precious belongings to higher levels of the home when possible. Since you may need to evacuate, your emergency kit, and in particular, the go bag, is important. Check the contents of your kit and replenish as necessary. Make sure there are no expired items, or um, any missing items. Make sure the kit is easily accessible and that everyone in your home knows where it is. After a flood, you may not have access to supplies in your home for weeks. Lastly, remember that flood insurance is typically not part of a standard policy. It requires additional special coverage. If you live in an area that is at risk for floods, speak to your insurance agent about flood insurance. Let's talk about what to do to stay safe during a flood. It's critical to pay attention to emergency information and alerts. If you live in a mandatory evacuation zone or local officials tell you to evacuate, do so immediately. This is not an option. If you're trapped in a building by flooding, go to the highest level of the building. 
However, do not climb into a closed attic as you may become trapped by rising floodwaters. Do not swim, walk, or drive through floodwaters. Now this may sound funny, but people have tried it. Just six inches of fast moving water can knock you down and one foot of moving water can sweep your vehicle away. Lastly, stay off bridges over fast moving water. If you plan to use a generator, make sure it is outdoors and away from windows. When cleaning up, take some precautions. Wear protective clothing. People with asthma and other lung conditions and or immune suppression should not enter buildings with indoor water leaks or if you can smell or see mold. And generally, it is advised that children should not take part in disaster cleanup work. Stay away from electrical work, especially if it is wet or you're standing in water. Stay out of the floodwaters. It can contain dangerous debris or power lines. Document all the damage using photographs and contact your insurance company to help you restore your property and belongings. Now let's pause for a minute of, of trivia and I'll hand it back over to Kira. So, next trivia question. What is the leading cause of death in the US? Is it A, tornadoes? Hurricanes, C, lightning, or D, floods that will kill more people each year than tornadoes, hurricanes, or lightning combined. Apologies, just to add there, what is leading um, natural hazard that causes uh, the most deaths in the United States, just to clarify. So I see many of you have answered correctly. The correct answer is B. Floods kill more people each year than tornadoes, hurricanes, or lightning. Back to you, Otas. Great, thank you. So we'll move on uh, to talk about earthquakes. Now with earthquakes, there's normally no advance warning. So to prepare, to gen follow the general guidelines we've discussed about having a plan, getting a kit, and staying informed. Even if you don't live in a high risk area, an earthquake can hit at any time. It may also impact you if you're traveling to a high risk area such as the West Coast. Let's look at how to stay safe during an earthquake. During an earthquake, you should drop, cover, and hold on. As you can see on the slide, you drop to your knees, you cover your head and your neck to prevent uh, any injury and crawl only as far as needed to reach uh, cover from falling materials. And then you hold on to any sturdy furniture until the shaking stops. You can also take a couple of precautions in advance. One is to secure your home by ensuring, uh, that ensuring items that are hung on walls are properly secured. And where possible, you can consider making structural changes to your building that make it vulnerable to collapse during an earthquake. Remember to also review your insurance coverage and ensure that you have a policy or endorsement that covers earthquakes. On the next slide, we'll look at some additional steps to stay safe during an earthquake. On the previous slide, we talked about how to drop, cover, and hold on. This is most commonly what you should do when you're in your house, apartment, or office building, for example. Many of you will remember practicing this during the annual shakeout drill that is held each October. If you're indoors and in bed, you should remain in your bed. In this case, turn face down and cover your head and neck with a pillow to protect yourself. If you're indoors, do not get in a doorway as this is an area that is highly susceptible to collapse. Finally, if you're indoors, do not attempt to go outside, shelter in place. If on the other hand, you are driving, pull over to a safe spot stop and apply your parking brake until it is safe to move again. If you're outdoors, stay outdoors and find a safe place to wait. Now that the earthquake is over, how do you stay safe? That's on the next slide. After an earthquake, there can be serious hazards such as damage to buildings, leaking gas and water lines, 
or drown power li down power lines, so be aware. Expect aftershocks to follow the main shock of an earthquake. Follow the same instructions as we talked about in the previous slide in the event of an aftershock. If you are in a damaged building, go outside and quickly move away from the building. Do not attempt to enter any damaged buildings, whether it is your home or office. If you are trapped, again, protect your mouth, nose, and eyes from dust. And once again, use text messaging, banging on a pipe or wall, or whistling instead of shouting to help, you, to help rescuers locate you. Finally, check yourself for injuries and either treat them or seek treatment for more serious conditions. Just to give you some hard facts on the next slide uh, from the US Geological Society. In the last year alone, from January 2020 to January 2021, there have been 500 earthquakes in, the Oak, in Oklahoma and Texas alone. Now, some of these might have been only small tremors, but it gives you an indication that the central region is certainly at risk for earthquakes. All right, we're getting down to our last couple of uh, uh, natural disasters, and we're gonna talk about winter storms. And, and I know winter storms are not so common in the central region. However, this means that when they do occur, the government and the residents are not always adequately prepared because a winter storm can last a few hours to several days and can cut off heat, power, and communication services. Let's look at a few things you can do to stay safe during winter storms. During a storm, stay off the local road, stay off roads as much as possible. You may be a good safe driver, but not everyone is, and these are unfamiliar conditions. Stay indoors and dress warmly. Frostbite is a significant risk. Prepare for power outages. Make sure you have flashlights and your emergency kit. If you plan to use a generator, make sure it is outside and away from windows. Continue to monitor weather patterns and alerts. The last uh, thing we wanna talk about today are power outages because power outages can arise as a result of any of the weather patterns we've discussed so far. So it's important to know how to prepare and stay safe. So, so what should you do if the power goes out? First, keep freezers and refrigerators closed. The refrigerator will keep food cold for about four hours. If you have coolers uh, and ice, you can use those if necessary. Take care to avoid carbon monoxide poisoning. Generators, camp stoves, or charcoal grilled, grills should always be used outdoors and at least 20 feet away from windows. Never use a gas stove top or oven to heat your home. And do not sit in your car to heat up while the car is in a closed garage. Check on your neighbors. Older adults and young children are especially vulnerable to extreme temperatures. Go to a community location with power if heat or cold is extreme. If you're enrolled in the DMT messages, you will find out if your local Jamaatana is available for shelter. Turn off or disconnect appliances, equipment, or electronics. Power may return with momentary surges or spikes that can cause damage. All right, now that we've covered all of the different natural disasters, let's move on to one last trivia slide with Karen. Last trivia question. What is the most important thing to remember in a blackout? Is it A, unplug and switch off all electronics and appliances? B, light every candle in the house? C, having flashlights and batteries handy? Or D, answers A and C. Let us know in the chat box. Correct answer is D. Unplug and switch off all electronics and appliances and having flashlights and batteries ready. Does anyone have any questions for us?
This is a great time if you would like to ask any question or post it in the chat box. All right, seems like we covered it well. Uh, Alta has covered it well. Uh, still, uh, we would like to ask you if you have any question, please feel free to ask. This is an opportunity to unmute yourself, ask question, or you can type it on the chat box. All right, seems like no questions. All right, Kamar Saab, I just, if I may jump in, I just want to say thank you to the uh, the central team uh, for all the efforts that went into this. Uh, it, it seems like it, it's as simple as we put a deck together and a few folks jump on and say some words, but just kudos to you, Kamar Saab, uh, Uftab and, and Rahim, and Kieran for all the efforts that, that went into to getting the group together to be here today. Um, and we remain at your disposal, however, in any way we can support uh, the Central Jamaat, uh, both I speak on behalf of, of our team, uh, the National Council, as well as uh, the Focus team as well. So thank you for your tremendous support and to the Jamaat that's on the call, thank you for bearing with us for the hour. Uh, we know there's only so many hours in the day and we're grateful that, that you spent uh, an hour with us uh, this afternoon. Thank we you. do have a few questions that have come up. Our children don't live in the same town as us. Any suggestions for them to stay prepared for any natural disasters? Yeah, this is Altas here. I, I would say that uh, you know the, the three basic principles are the same no matter where you live. Have a plan, um, stay informed, and have a kit. Uh, what's important is whatever region your children are in, whatever region you're in, uh, know what the risks are. If your children live on the West Coast, for example, the, the risk of earthquakes are higher. If your children live on the, in the Southeast, um, hurricanes are, are uh, more of a risk. So make sure they understand what their risks are um, and, and follow those three simple steps. That would be the key. Next question, how regularly should I update the list or your kit or your family preparedness plan? How regularly should that be updated? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, at the very least, and this, uh, you know, people sometimes ask this question also about, um, um, you know, replenishing the kit, uh, checking for expired items, um, uh, even batteries for, uh, Fire, uh, fire extinguishers, sorry, not fire extinguishers, or fire detectors, also checking the fire extinguishers, all kinds of safety related um, and, and uh, emergency related equipment. I would say at the very least, uh, you need to look at this um, annually. Uh, it would be better to do it at least twice a year, so every six months. But um, you, know, you should go through and make sure you don't have any expired items in your kit that all the items are um, are filled. The kit contents themselves, the list that we put up on the focus website, I don't expect that those are going to change very often. You know, that you can look at every year, every two years. I don't think that's going to change very often, but you know, making sure that you have everything um, every six months would be ideal. Okay. And uh, next question. Um, uh, we work in different locations and the kids' school is close to an hour away from our workplaces. How shall we plan a meeting place or find a way to protect ourselves and our kids? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, you might want to think about having um, a couple of different um, uh, meeting places. So one might be uh, some place that you're going to meet during the week when your children are in school. Another might be a situation where during the weekends and they might be closer to home. 
um, and you know understand what the plan is for your school for uh, you know what the school's response would be to a certain situation so if there was an evacuation you know what would the school expect from you where would they take the kids if anywhere would they expect the kids to be picked up and you know if they're expecting the kids to be picked up that would be an ideal place um, to meet at the school because you could drive uh, drive there but uh, understand what what the children's school is going to do in these kinds of situations okay and last question um where will we be able to find this the link to this webinar this will be on the Ismaili USA YouTube site in about a week. So this will be up, just give us some patience. It will be up there in a week. And then back to Kamya side. Thank you, thank you, Karen. I uh, hope this presentation was informative and you have some takeaways. I implore uh, you not to wait. Sit with your family, prepare emergency plan. Uh, storing valuables, important documents, making copies of these documents. Uh, also, most important, revisit your insurance. Ensure you have proper coverage. Uh, if you have any question concern, access line is, is available. Local DMT is available. Act, as soon as Jamati members call to access, uh, information will be forwarded to uh, institutions. They will give you a call. But the most of all, sign up for emergency alert warning. And, and we already posted uh, the chat box 94502. That's the number you wanna dial and your Jamaat Khana so you receive the emergency DMT text message. Have a plan, have an evacuation plan, shelter plan, emergency preparedness kit. All these are important. So please, at least have a plan. I would like to thank each one of you, our partners, Focus USA team, National Disaster Management team, Central Regional Disaster Management team. Uh, please, again, reach out to ACCESS as well as your local DMT coordinators in your Jamaat Khanas for any support you need. Uh, once again, thank you and Yali Madad. Thank you for joining.